Hello all, welcome to the Security Tube Linux Assembly Expert course and certification. In this video, we will look at how to write a custom encoder and we will call this the insertion encoder. So what is the insertion encoder? Now in the last two videos, we've looked at ZOR and NOT. So I thought let me spice things up by actually going ahead and doing something a little bit more wackier. And this is a custom encoder again called the insertion encoder. So how does this work? We take the original shell code and we are going to insert a character after every byte of the shell code. So let's say 0xaa is the character. And if you notice right now, every alternate byte is 0xaa. Now this is the shell code which we will then decode using an insertion decoder stub. And that would go ahead and shift the bytes accordingly so as to get back the original shell code. And once that happens, we go ahead and pass control to the original shell code. So let's look at how this can be done. Now the shell code which we will encode is the exec v stack one. So let me go ahead and take that just so that we know we are using the right shell code. Copy it, paste it in here. So the shell code is working perfectly. Now what I've done is to save us some time, I've gone ahead and created a Python file uh, which actually has the code for the insertion encoder. And really the shell code which you created has been pasted in here. And what this is doing is that it is inserting a 0xaa after every byte of the existing shell code. So once we run this, we are actually going to get an output with our insertion encoded shell code. This is it. And we would actually copy it and paste it inside the actually the decoder stub which we are going to write in assembly. So what I've done is I've pasted the shell code and at the very end, the 0xaa has been replaced by a string of four 0x BBs, right? And I'll come in just a bit as to why we've done this. So here is what we want when you look at this entire piece of uh, encoded shell code. We would like 31 to be moved in here. We'd want C0 to be moved in the place of 31, uh, 0x50 to be moved in here, so on and so forth, right? so that we can reassemble the original shell code. Now, one of the ways of course is that you can encode the size of the shell code so that we know when to stop. The other is maybe to include a marker byte. And this is what we've done here. So we have zero XAAs which are there in every alternate position. But once we are done with the encoded shell code, the last byte or rather just for padding the last four bytes we put in as 0xbb so we are going to use this as a marker and play around with you know the mathematics later which i'll explain in a bit as to identify when we've reached end of shell code okay so how am i going to do this so the first thing would be to get the address of the encoded shell code and I'm using the uh, RIP relative addressing technique to get the address into RSI, right? 
So RSI really points in here. Now RDI points to the next location after RSI. So RSI is pointing to the beginning of encoded shell code, which is 0x48, while RDI is pointing to the first 0x AA. After that, I XOR the RAX register to make it zero and move the value one into AL. So now RAX contains one. Now after that, I XOR RBX and make it zero as well. Now really here is what I want to do. I want to move 31 in the place of AA, move C0 in the current place of 31 so that we can get back the code. So I'm going to run a simple loop in which the very first thing I'm going to do uh, is actually use RSI, which is pointing to the beginning of the encoded shell code as the base and use RAX really as a counter, which allows us to move along this uh, list of bytes, right? Now, what we do is we are going to go ahead and first get the second byte. So at this point, RSI is pointing to 48, which means RSI plus RAX, and RAX is one right now, is basically pointing to 0xAA. So we fetch 0xAA into BL, and then XOR BL with 0xAA. Now, till the point we've reached here, this comparison would always end up in a zero, right? because XOR of a quantity with itself is zero and this would set the zero flag. Now, once we go past this and basically reach here, this comparison would be non-zero. And at that point, we know that we have reached the end of our shell code. And that is when we are going to use a jump on not zero to encoded shell code, right? Which means we can start executing our reassembled shell code. So this part is clear. Now let's look at the reassembly process itself. Now, what we are going to do is basically move the byte referenced by RSI plus RAX plus one, which is in the first case by 31, move it to the BL register and then move it to the byte pointed to by RDI. Now note that RDI is at this point pointing to the first 0xAA. So we are really moving 31 to the position where 0xAA is there currently, right? After that, we go ahead, increment RDI, add two to AL, right? And then we jump back in here. So that right now, we would basically be moving along this array in a similar way. So really what we are trying to do is that as we move along, we are copying the bytes forward so that the 0xAA, which was inserted by the insertion encoder, can be effectively nullified. And once we reach the very end, this XOR would end up in a non-zero value, and hence JNZ or jump on non-zero would be called, and we would then start executing our reassembled shell code. So let's jump right in. So I'm going to use nasm hyphen f. Then we can basically cut this out, insertion decoder dot o. We can copy this value out. Paste it inside our shell code dot c. and then we can run it. And there you go, right? Now, if you remember our original shell code, which we ran uh, was really an unbelievably small 32 bytes, which is definitely now bloated up because of all the code which we put in and the filler bytes to 109 bytes, right? Fantastic. So this is how we go about writing an arbitrary custom encoder which we've called the insertion encoder. 
in the next video, we will do a quick GDB analysis of the insertion encoder. That's all I had in mind for this video. If you're enjoying your time here at Pentester Academy, then please recommend us to your friends and colleagues in the InfoSec community. Thank you.